gentlemen, good morning. I would like to welcome you to this uh, plenary event and thank you for your participation. Today we have a special guest here and the purpose is to present the follow-on activity to be developed in the Academy as a follow-on of the Head of Space Agency Summit. And we have here today Dr. Nair, the President of the International Academy of Astronautics, Dr. Nair. <laughs> Enrico Sagese, the President of the Italian Space Agency. <laughs> Marius Ioan Piso, the President of the Romanian Space Agency. <laughs> and Ray Johnson, the CTO of Lockheed Martin Corporation and uh, Lockheed Martin was the main sponsor of uh, the Head of Space Agency Summit last November. In November last year, on the framework of the uh, 50th anniversary celebration of the Academy, we had uh, meetings in uh, 14 countries, and uh, it culminated with the uh, Head of Space Agency Summit. And uh, we have put together uh, 30 Head of Space Agencies, and uh, during one year preparation, we have developed a two-page declaration, IA declaration. And this declaration has been welcomed by the head of space agency. So we propose that we have a recap, uh, a nine-minute uh, recap of what happened in Washington, and then we move to the following uh, discussion. And uh, we'll, we will tell you that we have already started consultation of our members in the academy, and this will be part of the input for the discussion. So let's start with uh, what happened in Washington, D.C. in November. Ladies and gentlemen, evidently this time is summertime. Last uh, week we had the G20 summit in Seoul. Over the weekend it was the APEC summit in Yokohama and now it's the summit of the heads of space agencies in Washington. May I please ask the heads of agencies to come to the floor. I note with satisfaction that the activities sponsored by the Academy have, in recent years, multiplied and spread to all regions of the globe, providing the reach of the Academy and of astronautics to at least 72 countries. This is a credit and a tribute to the current president and the board of trustees and all those that have gone before them. And I offer you my congratulations, and many of you are in the room today. I also note with satisfaction the declaration that has been prepared by the IA president and secretary general working through the distinguished members of the Academy. I would like to thank to the International Academy of Astronautics and its staff for their initiative and effort to organize this event. And also for giving the Czech Space Office an opportunity to participate in it. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kroll. I would like first to thank uh, the International uh, Academy of Astronautics for organizing this uh, But it's also a good opportunity to, uh, to reflect on uh, what we can do more and together for making the future on planet Earth possible. As IAA Vice President, I would like to say that I greatly appreciate the capability of IAA to propose independent studies on space to the international community. And as class president, I welcome the IAA summit declaration that presents access for future of space cooperation. It is a clear statement of the increased significance of IAA for space cooperation. IAA is right now a sound catalyst for international cooperation, and I am personally committed to IAA. It is my honor to partake at this historic events, Head of Space Agency Summit, and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the International Academy of Astronautics. My sincere gratitude to the IAA Steering Committee and for all those who made this summit a success. I would like to simply illustrate the Italian Earth Observation Strategy and Vision. 
Italy is a worldwide leader in the realization of management of the only dual use air observation radar system in X band dedicated to risk prevention and management and to the protection of natural resources. The symposium was a vibrant challenge which was one of our core focuses in the declaration was held in Nagoya, Japan, in August. And many concerned people participated in the event. I was glad to hear that. Active discussion was made under the theme of what can we do for our mother Earth. Here in the United States, NASA is very fortunate to have recently received a new authorization act from the Congress signed by the President that outlines our agency's plans for the future. With this bipartisan legislation, we now await NASA's funding appropriations for this fiscal year. Regardless of the final outcome of that process, I believe we are now well positioned and strongly encouraged to continue our significant efforts to establish global partnerships in a number of different areas. With the continuing support of the President of Kazakhstan, Sultan Nazarbayev, uh, there have been also conducted uh, biotechnological experiments uh, which uh, resulted in uh, gaining valuable forms of plants. These unique results started the beginning of the development of new uh, trend in Kazakhstan. Apparently, apparently, we have a technical problem, but uh, I suggest that uh, you have probably seen not the 30, but uh, many of the major head of agencies. So why don't we ask now uh, Dr. Nair to give his view on why we did the summit and what is the goal? Professor <coughs> Enrico Sagasi, Dr. Mar John Piaso, Mr. Ray Johnson, Mr. John Michel Contant, distinguished members of the delegations, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. Well, I'm sorry that uh, we couldn't complete that uh, video that would have given a total picture of what transpired in Washington, D.C. last November. As you are aware that um, we were celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Academy, and we thought it is a good idea that we spread uh, our base for operation much wider. You have seen that the various countries have taken lead in space exploration on their own and jointly, and there are classic examples of the achievements starting from the man landing on the moon to the recent uh, robotic exploration of the moon and the Mars and so on. We thought it is a good idea that the space agencies come together, they share their global vision and then project what needs to be done for the future. Of course, uh, in all this, we have kept in mind the space is the common property of the humankind and it has to be utilized for enriching the quality of the human beings. So this motto was uh, behind us when we have the space agencies who met at Washington DC. Of course, uh, starting from the tools for space exploration to application, the arena is very vast. So it is humanly impossible to cover such an entire area in a session which lasts for a day. So we try to focus our attention 
to few of the pressing problems. We have seen that uh, climate change and environment is of utmost concern. And then the disaster management is another area where I think everybody wants something needs to be done. Human space exploration become inevitable for us to survive in the future. And then for better understanding of the planets and stellar system, we have to have the robotic exploration. So we have activated study groups and regional workshops covering these topics. And the results of that has been presented during this summit. And I'm extremely pleased to say that all the chiefs of space agencies have welcomed the summit declaration, which contained nearly 30 action items. Of course, again, to see that all these 30 action items are pursued with equal priority is next to impossible. So the academy thought that it is appropriate that we circulate these uh, recommendations to the academicians and the space agencies and other related organizations so that we have the inputs from them as to which areas are need to be prioritized and which needs the uh, immediate attention. So from that point of view, we have already circulated this uh, document to almost all the concerned people. And we expect in the course of next uh, couple of months, we have inputs from all such agencies and we will be able to really uh, call out what is the essentials which needs to be pursued. So this is our uh, immediate task. Of course, uh, as you know that today, the space exploration has become extremely complex, the highly demanding in terms of technology and also in terms of resource, both in terms of the human resource as well as the monetary resources. With the economic recession taking place at many parts of the globe, the funding towards the space gets affected and that's uh, really a negative factor which will uh, hamper the progress in this area. So in such a context, it is appropriate that we put together our ideas and resources so that we can focus on themes which are absolutely essential and make it happen within the shortest possible time and make it affordable to the countries. Once the systems are in place, definitely one can spread out and uh, this knowledge what we gain or the information which we collect can be disseminated to the needy people. You have seen this conference taking place in the South Africa. The need for the African region is a very highly uh, vast country, uh, which is in the process of uh, development. Uh, the, development. The developing country needs are much different from what is there in the developed countries. Similarly, many regions in uh, South America and many of the countries which have initiated their space program, the need uh, hand-holding. In fact, uh, I'm happy to say that many of our professional organizations who are part of this uh, Congress, especially the IAF, ISL, and IAA, we are taking uh, special care to see that we spread our activities right across the globe. In fact, I'm proud to say that IAA has uh, had almost uh, 30 events in the last year in different parts of the globe and nearly uh, attracting more than 4,000 participants. So that way, we ensure that the knowledge and wisdom, what we gain through the academic activity, is uh, disseminated to the needy. Now, the next step in this, we expect that, based on the inputs from various uh, agencies, we will be able to really come out with a sharply focused themes. These themes will be supplemented with uh, regional workshops, conferences, and also the thematic uh, presentation in uh, annual events like this. Uh, again, institute studies in some of the advanced fields where a lot of imagination and ideas has to get together. We have to put together the wisdom of the pioneers and the energy of the younger generation to achieve such a goal. So we intend to do this in the coming months. And with that, we will be able to come out with the concrete proposals 
which can be presented to the space agencies and we will act as a catalyst in bringing together the space agencies and making them work together for the prosperity of the humankind. Thank you. Maybe it would be interesting to have the point of view of space agencies. Dr. Sargese, you were at the summit. Can you say a little bit on it? Thank you, Jean-Michel. Good morning to everybody. I think that um, the task which have been given to me, that is uh, the value of the summit for the space agency, is uh, quite a simple task. Eh? provided that uh, you understand what are uh, the scope of the agencies. So uh, let me resume what is uh, uh, the problem, what are the problems that uh, we are facing as agencies. The first point is uh, we have to satisfy the request of data from a scientist. So our scientists uh, are looking forward to having uh, more and more data in order to uh, have uh, really the possibility to test their hypothesis, technical hypothesis, and scientific hypothesis. So they are pushing hard in order to get this data. The second major point is the fact that we have to operate for the technology advancement of our industry. So we have, everybody knows, a very competitive world. So we have to help in national industries in such a way they reach uh, a kind of uh, um, a level of quality, a level of technology, which would allow them then uh, to use uh, this technology for commercial purposes. So uh, we have uh, more or less uh, uh, to cooperate uh, in some ways uh, with other agencies, but we have uh, knowing that there is a competition behind us. So there is uh, a kind of uh, uh, if I can resume it, uh, competition for cooperation. So it's uh, quite an hard task. Uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the last point uh, is that we have to cope uh, with the, the amount of money that we receive. And uh, it's uh, worthless saying uh, what is the situation of crisis now in the world. But let me just recall a few numbers, three numbers. Uh, if we are thinking in terms of uh, a satellite uh, for uh, robotic exploration, uh, we will have to spend uh, something in between uh, one and two billion dollars. The space station, uh, in effect, has costed something in the region of 100 billion dollars. If, as uh, everybody is saying, uh, starting from the President of the United States, so uh, I mean, uh, quite, quite important, that we have uh, to go to Mars. Uh, Nevertheless, we have to spend something in the region of 500 billion dollars, which means uh, in terms of uh, the uh, world uh, gross uh, product, something like uh, 1,000 of it, uh, of the uh, yearly product of the world, for 10 years. So you understand that uh, is something that is uh, dramatically ample. And it's so dramatic that uh, the objective uh, is, uh, has to be uh, the objective uh, of a world cooperation. So nobody can really uh, figure out uh, uh, these numbers uh, in uh, a context which does not include everybody in the world. So the, uh, the effect of uh, thinking in these terms uh, has led many of us uh, to speak in terms of, uh, uh, in also in other fields, of cooperation in many fields, like uh, uh, the weather, the climate, uh, the remote sensing of the earth, and so on, in a cooperation which has uh, uh, a kind of new terms. So the virtual constellation, for example, is a new term which was uh, used recently in the idea that uh, all the countries uh, can operate singularly, but have to launch satellites, have to have their own systems, which allow them to cooperate with all other nations. So we have the virtual constellation with the possibility then to exchange data. And then, again, the cooperation leads us to being motivated 
to uh, utilize uh, these uh, means uh, in a common way. So in these years, uh, for example, uh, uh, last year, in effect, uh, I was the president of CIOS. Uh, so the, uh, the number of participating uh, agencies and entities in this vast group is quite large. In CIOS, we have now roughly 29 agencies uh, and uh, uh, other uh, 21 uh, entities uh, supporting it. So this means that uh, we have uh, to work hard uh, in uh, confronting uh, and in speaking uh, we head of agencies. Uh, so uh, the importance of the summit uh, is uh, really the possibility to pass from uh, a bilateral, or in some cases multilateral uh, coordination like in the European Space Agency, but with many, many bilateral uh, speeches uh, to a confrontation uh, with everybody, all on the same plane. So what was important then the summit was uh, the possibility for uh, IAA to vehiculate uh, common wishes uh, in front of a large audience. So the ideas uh, should not be limited to the head of agencies, but should be accepted by large audiences of all uh, the stakeholders of space activities. The second major problem is uh, always uh, to generate enthusiasm uh, for particular activities. Uh, so apart from simplify the contacts, uh, what is important to understand uh, is that uh, nevertheless uh, there are leader countries. Uh, if we speak about the human exploration, the leader country is the uh, United States. Uh, and we have uh, to generate enthusiasm uh, in order to push them uh, in a certain direction. So it is important then that this feeling, this common feeling, be perceived uh, in a, a reciprocal situation also by the head of agencies. So we can pass messages, but we receive from, uh, from you, from all the stakeholders, uh, important messages. So the future is uh, always uh, in favor of this summit. Uh, maybe in the future we will confront uh, in terms of uh, specific teams. So there is the need to call a team and have a confrontation. So if I can then uh, conclude the speech, uh, the summit itself uh, and uh, IAA were quite important uh, to assess uh, uh, what we, everybody of us, feel but uh, should be stressed the fact that the space is a common objective and not the objective of a single nation. Thank you very much. So the second agence, space agency that would be invited to report today is the Romanian Space Agency. And uh, Dr. Pizzo was also at the summit. And uh, can you give us a little perspective on your vision? Thank you, Jean-Michel, distinguished president of the IAF, distinguished president of the IAA, distinguished uh, guests, delegates, and colleagues. Uh, that uh, forum made me uh, think more about uh, cooperation. You see, the space environment uh, changed, and in particular in the last uh, decade, from the beginning, space was uh, devoted uh, more or less to military purposes and uh, to science. Then space applications as uh, telecommunications, uh, earth observation, the global uh, positioning, they become uh, a reality. Then space was driven by commercial reasons. Uh, nevertheless, in the last uh, decade, space is also driven by uh, security purposes. And uh, when I'm speaking about security, I'm not speaking about military, I'm speaking about uh, the uh, new uh, threats against our civilization. This means uh, vertical threats, uh, starting from uh, uh, earth diseases, as uh, drought, as uh, uh, other specific terrestrial uh, issues that might be managed by that may be uh, eradicated by a good management of the resources. And also, I'm thinking of uh, the possible cosmic threats, as uh, we can see. 
as the space weather issues, but also uh, issues related to planetary defense, as possible asteroid collisions. So space uh, become uh, filled with a very wide area of uh, topics, and uh, each uh, uh, space agency, even if it was uh, the largest or a new one, uh, realized that uh, uh, there are several issues that uh, cannot be solved uh, in other ways than uh, wide international cooperation. This means global cooperation. Uh, that uh, forum might uh, provide such uh, uh, permanent, uh, uh, let's say, uh, body in which uh, the space agency's leaders might uh, take decision. There is a need of global decision at that level, and uh, in the same time connected with uh, the necessity to spend uh, in an uh, appropriate way the planetary resources. Most of the space missions are taking uh, are done today in wide international cooperation. I would also like to draw your attention to an example of cooperation that uh, we are considering the European Space Agency in which uh, a number of 19 countries today are sharing resources for a common uh, purpose. But in the same time, those countries are keeping, most of them, their national programs. And uh, this is a very good balance between, uh, uh, let's say, international needs, I cannot say global, but international needs, the ESA, and uh, each country's uh, own ambitions and program and way to develop. I would like to thank you for your attention. Dr. Johnson, I would like, in addition to your vision as industry leader and uh, main sponsor of the summit, I would like also you to comment uh, the poll. We have made an investigation, a survey among our members. It's only a preliminary result, but you have the data, so maybe you could also add this in your report. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me just let you know how exciting it was for those of you who did not get a chance to take part in the uh, meeting of the 30 heads of space agencies in Washington. It was a really exciting event. In fact, as you all know, it was the first of its kind. And so if you think about it from the industry perspective, uh, the way we look at this is, uh, in this conference, of course, has highlighted this. Space has been important, but space continues to be important, and it may be even growing in importance, because many of the most challenging problems that the planet faces, part of the solutions to those Part of the solution to those problems lies in space, yet to be unexplored areas, in fact. We also know, as was highlighted when you think about the situation of the global economy, no nation, not even the United States, is able to go it alone in space. And so the need for collaboration and cooperation has never been greater, and the ability to collaborate and cooperate on these problems of global concern is a great opportunity. Also, because of this uncertain future, if you think about the academy and the role they may play, you can think about a systems engineering approach and solution to many of these problems. And in that systems engineering approach, there will be specialists in different areas. And you can think about bringing those specialists together, both at the national and at the technical level. And this academy has the ability and the knowledge to bring, bring those various components of that systems engineering solution together in a way that makes sense, in a way that holds, holds ground technically, uh, as well as from an uh, agency perspective for the various nations. From an industry point of view, um, as we pointed out, the global economy uh, challenges have put a lot of pressure on budgets across the agencies. So really, what is it that industry looks for? Industry looks for stability. 
Industry looks for stability in policies. They look for stability in strategy. And they look for stability in budgets. And through that stability comes programs that run more smoothly, programs that stay on budget, and programs that, that execute and achieve their goals. And so what I'm going to go over in a minute are, is to describe the initial findings of the actions that came out of the four topical areas from the summit. It's very important that when you, when, after we bring together these 30 heads of, of space agencies, that we act on these issues, that we uh, act aggressively on these issues. And I'd like to see, we discussed it um, recently this week, I'd like to see, we'd all like to see the actions that take place in the various meetings that go on throughout the year. We'd like to see a component be applied to the actions that have come out of this 30-party meeting. So let me uh, briefly summarize if, I don't know if we have the slides, uh, please, for the next. Okay, so the four areas were climate change uh, as number one. And in climate change, and these are essentially an aggregation of the findings that came out of the topical areas. There were a number of components in each topical area and this is an aggregation of those. Think of these as, as the main areas of focus in these four areas. And uh, as the other speakers have said, we invite your comments on these uh, areas, uh, and we'll refine them, and they will be um, handled as we talked about. So the first one is in, in the area of climate change, which is one of the four topics, coordination and sharing of data. There was a strong desire as data are collected. There are a lot of uncertainties in the data to support the models. And the models across the various nations can be better refined uh, if those data are shared. And also a focus on the global problems such as green systems and alternative energy. These were two of the areas that were mentioned, but of course there are many more. Next slide, please. Second area is human space flight. And in this uh, area, the support of human spaceflight exploration in low Earth orbit was highly supported. So LEO, human spaceflight, to encourage and support um, that, uh, that regime was, in, was uh, one of the topical areas. Secondly, welcoming, enabling technologies to, technologies to support the grand challenges such as energy and environment that I mentioned before. So human spaceflight support to LEO as well as broader support to not only just exploration, but exploration for the purpose of supporting the grand challenges. Next slide. The third area was planetary robotic exploration. And, and the two areas here were, to, number one, to use robotic exploration to extend human spaceflight exploration beyond where it would naturally be able to go. So in other words, think about not an either or scenario of human space flight or robotic exploration, but think about the coupling and how they can be supportive of each other in their findings. And then uh, second area was shared science and, and uh, science for exploration and from exploration. So sharing the science that can support that exploration, the planning, the organizing, the goals, and then after the exploration takes place, sharing the results of that exploration. And the next area, please. And the last area was disaster management. And in the disaster management area, the first one was uh, support Earth observation systems for disaster management, recognizing that uh, a lot can be learned from broad area coverage and looking at, uh, at, at uh, disaster management from space. And also, again, focusing on that collaboration and coordination, sharing Earth observation data after it's collected for the purpose of, of global disaster management. When we think about space, it's always been illustrative to me to think about how much it touches our lives and what it would be like, you know, a day in the life without space. Uh, as as uh, was pointed out, there has been a military focus for space from various nations' points of view, but that's, that uh, as well as the civil expor exploration, but that's broadening. And the need for collaboration, the need for cooperation to solve these global challenges has never been greater. And uh, the 30 Heads of Space Agency Summit gives us an opportunity
to leverage the connections that were made and to begin to share uh, ideas globally and especially as was pointed out in these four areas. Uh, next slide, please. So you have a uh, summit at, at iamail.org, email address here, and we encourage uh, your comments, your ideas in these areas and other areas. And uh, I think we're going to move to a uh, Q&A session now. Is that right? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. I, uh, you may understand that the purpose of the Academy is not to uh, do the work of a space agency, but to provide uh, the, the opportunity for a broader number of space emerging country uh, to be in the discussion. And uh, as of now, in addition to the 30 head of agencies that have welcomed the declaration, there are six other uh, space agencies that after the summit uh, welcome as well the declaration. And there are maybe a few more. So to come. So the question is, how, what is the mechanism today for having on the same table for preliminary discussion country that never met really before? And so the purpose of the academy is to offer this uh, opportunity by the way of conference and uh, those uh, orientation gives the way where we are going to have our future conference in the months to come, but also the way of studies. And uh, we are going in specific area to initiate studies to explore with an international team, including every country interested in the subject, to develop more technically the, 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 the a concept. So, but maybe uh, this dream is nice, but maybe the crisis today is not, is probably affecting the, the the, the possibility of cooperation. Do you have any reaction on that uh, crisis? Well, uh, in effect, uh, the, uh, the crisis is affecting everything, and uh, we are insisting always saying that space should be out of the crisis, should be considered as a, a challenge, but should be considered as an item which will drive us, all of us, out of crisis in terms of technology development, in terms of data and information. But in effect, uh, uh, the situation which uh, is uh, around the world uh, of uh, space, uh, starting from NASA and ending uh, with ourselves, uh, is such that uh, it is uh, already a dream to maintain the quantity of money that we have spent uh, in the recent years. So by sure, we have uh, to see in the future uh, all the opportunities of cooperation, sharing uh, uh, costs, sharing uh, objectives, uh, and having the possibility then uh, to, uh, in, in certain way, to reduce the amount of money of a single nation. So the ambition of the single nation should be a little bit uh, reduced uh, while maintaining uh, the overall ambition of uh, the humanity in general and the, of the space agencies as uh, cooperative agencies uh, uh, in the world. I don't think uh, the crisis should exist for space. Um, we might think uh, uh, of the fact that uh, most of the space programs are long term and uh, they are, uh, in the same time, long-term uh, value-added uh, providers. Usually we say that uh, one euro invested in ESA brings other uh, 10 euros in the national and uh, European environment, for example, but in a, uh, long, on a long term, 10 to 15 years. In uh, the same time, we should think that uh, uh, most of the space systems become uh, critical infrastructure for the planet Earth. I'm thinking of the communication satellites, but also the global positioning and navigation systems, which uh, become uh, necessary parts of different uh, industrial and commercial applications, and they are not working without. Uh, and on the third time, we should uh, also think that uh, space programs are providing uh, technologies 
which uh, by spin-off return to uh, industry and uh, to the societal applications. Uh, space programs are uh, different from other technology development programs uh, because they are uh, producing uh, application-oriented uh, issues and not business-oriented issues as uh, main purpose. And uh, uh, such need and uh, the complexity and the very high level of uh, multidisciplinarity makes space programs need this. I'm sure that uh, uh, no of, uh, none of the major space agencies are, uh, will really reduce uh, budgets for the next uh, medium and long-term uh, period. I don't know if, uh, if a crisis exists or not, but I do know that economic challenges exist. And uh, I think the, uh, the value of uh, the Academy's role in bringing the people together the way that they did is to serve as not only the catalyst, as, uh, as Dr. Nair said, but also as a, um, as a technical uh, representation and support and advisory group. Because the Academy does have deep technical expertise, it is not necessarily today, when you think about the kinds of problems that we face, it's not, the, the challenges are not necessarily in the space activities themselves. The challenges are really in what should those activities be doing to support the findings and the results that will lead to the solutions of these problems. And so I think in addition to collaboration along the area of space activities, having to do with the, with the technologies of space, there's also a great opportunity to collaborate across the solution to the problems that space represents an opportunity to learn from. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Nai, a few months ago you were the chairman of ISRO, and you have experience also running for several years the, the Indian Space Agency. Do you have any comment on the subject of crisis? <coughs> Well, I think uh, uh, we have been concentrating in India on two aspects. Uh, one is to see that uh, we have the uh, standard own capability for access to space, uh, build the spacecraft for Earth observation, communication system, and for scientific needs. Uh, but more than that, we have given thrust to the application of a space-based system uh, for the benefit of the people. The telemedicine, teleeducation, the support to the agriculturists, fishermen, and the planners, all these have uh, had been developed and perfected to a great extent. So I, I would imagine for countries which are emerging uh, to use the space technology, even though they don't have the means by themselves, uh, other developed countries should support them in enabling them to use the space technology for the benefit of the people. Uh, in fact, uh, that's a model uh, we, I would like to recommend for consideration. Of course, uh, when we look at the future, there are focused themes we have identified in terms of environment and climate change, and uh, of course, uh, the human access to space, and so on. These are some of the uh, projects which we need uh, of course, we have the technical competence in uh, individual countries, but how to synthesize and uh, synergize these efforts so that we have a global observation system which is standardized, which can meet almost all the requirements, not only for the resource, but all the issues related to the climate change, weather, and so on. And uh, again, in the human access to space, of course, the space station is available for maybe 10 years. Uh, but in that period, how to uh, really enable participation by other countries. This is one issue which has to be addressed. So in that context, I agree with uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson that uh, we have to concentrate two aspects. One is the immediate requirements. Other is the futuristic requirement. There, a lot of technology initiatives will have to be taken. Uh, the academicians are well uh, equipped to do that. But at the same time, we have to see that as we look at the problems which are occurring at different parts of the globe and how we can uh, suggest solution to those problems. So it is a mixed approach of uh, uh, immediate future and the long term. 
and then how the academic work and the practical needs of the society uh, can be put together. Of course, uh, for, there are, uh, as uh, pointed out, Mr. Saga said that uh, there is a European Space Agency who integrates activity within the Europe. And uh, similarly, India is a large uh, portion of the population, one-sixth of the population. Uh, they have their own agencies. Uh, Chinese space program is also very vibrant. Uh, so if we ensure that uh, all these agencies, uh, at least once in a few years, they sit together they share their problems and vision, uh, then we can have a, a much better uh, focused activity for the future. Thank you. Um, the, the question is, uh, today the, all agencies and all nations have their own program, and this is usually pluriannual, and it already takes most of the budget. So if there are new subjects to open with new partner, new player, how do we do with the current constraint of budget? Well, I think, uh, let me cite the example of uh, the Chandrayaan, the moon mission which India has conceived. Yes, we have to spend uh, quite a lot of money in realizing that mission. Uh, but what the approach what we took was, yes, uh, India took the lead of uh, building the main spacecraft and the launch system. Whereas uh, we had a discussion with the European Space Agency as well as the uh, NASA and uh, we had a truly an international uh, collaborative, cooperative uh, program. And at the end of that, we have shared the data with the scientists uh, between these three agencies. And soon, it will be put out in the public domain for the other users also. So this is a good model to follow. See, some uh, country can be the, playing the lead role, and uh, we can ensure that others do participate in such program. So then it becomes affordable. One doesn't have to invest totally for a program of this magnitude. So when we talk about the Mars exploration, yes, there's a good example where perhaps the agencies should together and draw up a plan. Uh, again, we are talking about the energy from space. Uh, can we have innovative solutions worked out uh, right uh, across the uh, borders of the country? And can it be made as a global uh, theme? So these are some examples which we can consider. Dr. Sargesi, what about the budget of Italian Space Agency? <laughs> well, our budget uh, at the moment is stable, uh, which does not mean that uh, uh, future can challenge us. Uh, what is important to say is that in Italy, as well as um, in many other countries, uh, we are facing uh, the face of so-called uh, public-private uh, partnership. So uh, the idea is that uh, the, uh, the agency will uh, highlight uh, targets and will put uh, critical money to reach the targets. But we feel that uh, industry can uh, have uh, an economic result by the exploitation of the system. So uh, we are then asking uh, the uh, industry to participate uh, in the investment in order then to, to exploit the result of the research. And this is demonstrating uh, quite interesting in uh, some fields like uh, telecommunication, which is uh, commercial and mature, but also in earth observation. So the feeling is that uh, uh, we will have in the future not only the agencies playing a major role in investing, uh, but the same industry participating uh, in the investment in order to get the exploitation of the results. Uh, the idea was also to give the floor to the, to the audience. Is there anyone in the room that would like to have a question? You are welcome. Can you come? Can you come, sir? Come here. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jean-Marc Salotti from, from France. Um, I have a comment on what has been said by uh, Enrico Sagez, uh, on the president of the Italian Space Agency. Um, you said that um, a, mi a human mission to Mars would cost uh, about f $500 billion. Well, uh, Maybe uh, you, you, you were referring to the uh, uh, NASA reference architecture for human mission to Mars, because it's a complex one, and uh, even the feasibility is, is not uh, proven. So, but uh, <clears throat> I, I worked, I personally worked on uh, human mission to Mars, and uh, I published a recent paper a few months ago on, in, for a new architecture, 
And uh, I can tell you that it, it, could, it could cost much less. And uh, um, I also have a presentation on tomorrow morning if you want to, to attend the, the, the presentation. Anyway, uh, just, just, I just want to, to give you some, some arguments. Of course, I cannot convince you in a few words now, but um, if you carefully read the, the NASA reference architecture report, um, they, they, say, they assume that, for instance, they have six astronauts at departure from Earth, and in fact, you can reduce the size of the crew and save, have huge mass savings if you reduce the mass of the crew. And anyway, I don't want to go into details now, but just to say that... Can you uh, make it short, please? We, yeah, we have just, five, just, four minutes left. Okay, just one, one just thing. I think it would cost maybe $40 billion. Uh, and what I would like to, to, IAA to, to, to do now is to, to ask NASA and also ESA, who published a report in 2004, uh, to work on, on mass missions. And I think you, you proposed, the, 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 um, the president of the IA proposed the, to, to, uh, to work on, on a mission, human mission to Mars. This is what we have to do now. I think we have, there are many options that have to be developed. So um, we should do that. We should Thank work you. on that. Maybe, maybe Dr. Sargesi could respond. Well, um, the important thing to, uh, to consider is, uh, of course, the, the, the type of mission, uh, but also uh, what are the missing uh, stones to arrive to construct this building. One missing stone is uh, the survival of the crew. Uh, we wanted to send people, but we wanted to have them back. So uh, to go there in the propulsion system we have today, it takes eight months. And then uh, we should stay a long, one month, a couple of months over there, and then eight months to come back. So this amount of time is at the moment incompatible with the survival of the people. Uh, to be safe, uh, we are putting uh, in the International Space Station people for just uh, six months. Then we have to protect them from uh, cosmic rays, which is not the case for the International Space Station. So, I mean, there are items which are quite important to be considered right now. And we have to build and work on these items. Then, uh, of course, uh, uh, clever ideas can come on uh, how to reduce the budget, uh, because maybe the budget that we are conceiving today is such that prevents us to go there. Uh, maybe studying, uh, profiting of the studies of many people, we could reconsider uh, the overall mission, but still we have missing stones. Thank you. It's two minutes left. Maybe it's time to ask again. Do you have any more to add? Please. I'm not sure we can have the time to, ask for the, to give the floor for a second question unless it is short. Is there someone having a short question? Can you take, give the mic? I have two short specific questions, very short. <laughs> two, but short. Uh, one is directed to Madhavan Nair, sir. I'm from India, uh, National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. Uh, can, do you see a future of a health sat network in India and maybe spread it out to the other developing countries. We are planning to have one health sat, but maybe we'll need a network of health sat like we have a network of Earth observation satellites. Yes, we have uh, nucleated this uh, health satellite uh, uh, program, so it's tele telemedicine program. Uh, it is growing at a very fast rate, so in due course there will be dedicated satellites for that purpose. Also, we have signed an agreement with Ethiopia to share our knowledge and expertise to spread in this region. So perhaps uh, in due course this will become a global theme and there could be service providers even on a commercial basis to support this. And do you see India as a world leader of space technology in the coming future? There are a number of leaders, we will be one among them. <laughs> Thank you for making the, the... I just would like to make a short announcement. Uh, we have uh, produced studies that we refer to at the time of the summit. And for instance, there is a, a, a publication of a proceeding of a conference to prepare the summit, the one of Nagoya. So you can, uh, the local committee of Nagoya has prepared with JAXA and Yusef 
to the proceeding for the 50th anniversary celebration symposium on climate change. And uh, if you give your card to the IA office, room, room 170 upstairs, uh, the Yusef and JAXA will be happy to, pro Dr. Mihaha and Kibe will be happy to provide you with the proceedings. Uh, this is the same, we have four studies that has been published and uh, we will be happy to provide you a copy of the study. Incidentally, they are online for free on our website. Uh, and the website is in the program book of, the, of this Congress. Another last information, uh, we have uh, tomorrow Commission 5 that has prepared a special session, E36, uh, the room TS8, and tomorrow there is uh, four studies to be presented in the form of a communication and paper. So you are welcome if you want to le le learn about a little more on our studies. Thank you, sir, and head of agencies, and Dr. Ray Johnson. Thank you, the audience, to participate to this meeting. Thank you. Thank you.